proposed a, a some sort of truce or, or, or peace a year ago was because I predicted pretty much exactly what would, would happen, uh, which is a lot of people dying for basically almost no changes in land. Um, and this, the, the, the loss of the, the flower of Ukrainian and Russian youth, and we should have some sympathy for the, the Russian boys as well as the Ukrainian boys, because the Russian boys didn't, didn't ask to be on their front line. They have to be. So um, there's a lot of sons not, not coming back to their parents, you know, and and I think most of them don't don't really have. They don't hate the other side, you know. It's sort of like, is this saying about like this, this saying comes from World War One? It's like young boys who don't know each other killing each other on behalf of old men that do know each other. <sighs> the hell's the point of that? So Volodymyr Zelensky said that he's not, or has said in the past, he's not interested in talking to Putin directly. Do you think he should yeah. sit down, man to man, leader to leader, and negotiate peace? Look, I think I would just recommend do not send the flower of Ukrainian youth to be to die uh, in trenches. Uh, whether he talks to Putin or not, just don't do that. Um, whoever goes on the offensive will lose massive numbers of people. Um, and history will not look kindly upon them. You've spoken honestly about the possibility of war between US and China in the long term, if no diplomatic solution is found. For example, on the question of Taiwan and one China policy. Right. How do we avoid the trajectory where these two superpowers clash? Well, it's, it's worth reading that book on the, the uh, difficult to pronounce Thucydides trap, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. I love war history. I like inside out and backwards. Um, there's hardly a battle I haven't read, read about. And, and trying to figure out like what, what really was the cause of victory in any particular case, as mm -hmm. opposed to what one side or another claimed was the, the reason. Both the victory and what sparked the war. And yeah, yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. So that Athens and Sparta is a classic case. The thing about the Greeks is they really wrote down a lot of stuff. They loved writing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are lots of interesting things that happened in many parts of the world, but they just, people just didn't write it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we don't know what happened, or they didn't really write with de in detail. They just mm -hmm. would say like, "We went, we had a battle, and we won." And like, well, what? Can you add a bit more? Um, <laughs> the, the, the Greeks they really wrote a lot. <laughs> They were very articulate on, they just love writing. So, mm -hmm. and we have a bunch of that writing that's preserved. So we know what led up to the uh, Peloponnesian War between um, the Spartan and Athenian alliance. Um, and uh, we, we know that they, they, for quite, they, they saw it coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Spartans didn't write, they, they also weren't very verbose by their nature, but they did write, but they weren't very verbose. <laughs> yeah, they were terse. Uh, but the, the, Athenians and the other Greeks wrote, wrote a line. And they were like, um, and Sp Sparta was really kind of like the leader of, of Greece. Um, but, but Athens grew stronger and stronger with each passing year. And, um, and everyone's like, well, that's inevitable that there's gonna be a clash between Athens and Sparta. Uh, well, how do we avoid that? And they couldn't, they couldn't, they actually, they saw it coming and they still could not avoid it. <laughs> so, you know, at some point, if there's, if, if one uh, group, one civilization or, or country or whatever um, exceeds another, sort of like if, you know, the United States has been the biggest kid on the block for, since I think around 1890 uh, from an economic standpoint. So the United States has been the economic, most powerful economic engine in the world longer than anyone's been alive. Um, and the foundation of war is economics. So now we have a situation in the case of China where the, um, the economy is likely to be two, perhaps three times larger than that of the US. So imagine you're the biggest kid on the block for as long as anyone can remember, and suddenly a kid comes along who's twice your size. So we see it coming. Yeah. How is it possible to stop? Is 